Hello, Unai. It's great to have you here. And uh, first of all, thank you so much for being part of um, Money Ruins and the Sea exhibition. It was It's really exciting to have your work as part of that. So maybe before um, we moved into the uh, couple of questions that I have for you, can you tell us a little bit about your practice, just an introduction on uh, your artistic work and practice? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for um, inviting me to do this interview and to also to be part of Money Ruins in the Sea. I love that title, by the way. It's such a good one. So nice. Um, yeah, so my name is Nye Thompson um, and I'm an artist and um, a little bit of background about me. So before I was an artist, um, I worked as a software designer for many years. Um, and I guess that kind of informs my practice and my approach. So the things that kind of interest me, I'm very interested in the way that we are starting to share the act of looking at the world with machines around us. I'm very interested in that kind of notion of this sort of um, emerging machine gaze, but also how that's becoming kind of part of our worldview. And I'm also very interested in the kind of... Um, in, in 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 networks in the sort of networks that, that that surround us and the sort of unintentional um, or intentional behaviors the sort of new strange behaviors that are kind of emerge from them or the sort of way that sort of power can be sort of um, deliberately or unintentionally sort of embedded in sort of unexpected places um, and the way that I typically work um, I think it is kind of quite distinctive one one of the things I re typically do is I create um, kind of experimental software architectures and software pipelines to um, explore areas that I'm interested in. So often I will kind of find an area that I just don't know what's going on in there or I kind of want to understand more of and I will build this kind of pipeline typically of multiple sort of software systems. Um, sort of chunk together, um, which will then explore that area and kind of bring me back data and information, which I kind of then sort of spend time thinking about analyzing um, and um, use as used to create work. So the kind of work is it's sort of partly performative and then partly kind of um, this creative um, process. Um, and um, in CLI, the piece that's in the um, in Money Ruins in the Sea um, is, is a kind of good example of that. Um, so NCLI is a digitally generated um, journey around the uh, British mainland, um, sort of literally sort of following the sort of boundary, the sort of water off the British coast, looping and looping round and round um, the whole British British mainland. So it's quite long because it, it goes all the way around. Um, and it's created entirely um, from satellite imagery. It's created in Google Earth, um, yeah, from satellite imagery. Um, and I'm very interested in the way that um, these kind of imaging um, technologies are allowing us to build kind of these strange simulacra of our world which then kind of become almost indistinguishable from our experience of the world itself so I've done a lot of work um, in Google Earth using these kind of um, systems I mean basically in, in something like Insuli what what I would do is I actually it starts off as a drawing and I will draw a line down a kind of area of, of interest in this case right around the British Isles um, and then send a virtual camera down that line. Um, so you end up with something that maybe could almost be drone footage, but it's not, it's just way stranger. Um, and then that kind of very sort of prolonged act of looking in a way is a good way of unpicking all of the, all of the strangeness, all of the kind of unexpected incident in that is actually you know, within this within this worldview, and um, so the in the version that I 
I'd made the, my first version of Insuli back in 2019. Um, and the version that I've shown, um, and that was like a sort of top down, um, almost directly sort of nine degree, degrees down um, view of the sea. But for the version that I was showing um, in many rooms in the sea, I have actually taken the same drawing, but remade it using um, more recent data, um, but also changing the perspective. So in this one, we actually have, rather than just looking straight down at the water, we have a horizon. Um, so I thought yeah. it would be very interesting just to actually, that act of moving towards the horizon. Exactly, um, yeah. I thought that was really interesting because you see a bit of the coast as well, right? So yeah. you, you have this view of the coast as you go, as you move around yeah. with with the animation as well, with like the, the video, which is really interesting. So, yeah, I mean, that this is what I find fascinating about Insula is that how you bring these ideas, you know, you just bring in front of us how these um, imaging technologies can change the way our perception of the world and reality and uh, and I think, and of course, it is like Google is really interesting, like Google Earth in that, because of course there are bits that might be disguised that we don't, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't mean that it's what it what it's there, right? Like what we see in a way. So I would love to hear a little bit like how, how from you, how do you think that the world is shaped through these technologies that are more and more like around us and it, it in a kind it, they become a, a bit some somehow like a filter through which mm. we we kind of understand and perceive the world right so yes yeah, so it'd be great to hear a little bit about what is what is the impact of these mm. and it's such a yeah it, it's such a big impact i think in in a couple of ways i mean and the first way um for me that it, it's a really it has a really big impact is around is around kind of control and ownership. So, you know, these sort of, um, this, these views of the world, um, they kind of overlay our experience of the world and kind of conflate with them. Um, so they are, um, oh, what's the word? Um, so, you know, they, they sort of simultaneously, they, they allow you to do new things like see stuff that you couldn't see before but at the same time they control um what can be seen and what can't be seen um and i guess for me as well they kind of really foreground that relationship between um the act of looking and the act of owning um so that kind of in a what in a way what they're kind of doing is they are taking these sort of the, with the, sat, the sat, these satellite imaging systems, they are taking ownership of the appearance of the world, ownership of the surface of the world. Um, and they're just doing it, you know, they've just taken it. It's a kind of it's a kind of um colonization, a digital colonization of the surface of the world. It's a it's a kind of colonialism, particularly it's it's the same old culprits, isn't it? The same old countries who are doing this. That, um, they take control of the world and then they copyright the inf the information and suddenly they and they control how it's how it's actually um, given out and then suddenly you know you've got a whole new layer um, of control but it's very um, you know it kind of asks the question as well about um, in a way the relationship between controlling or owning the appearance of the world and owning the thing itself. And those two things become more blurred. And in many circumstances, yes. owning the appearance of something can be more powerful than owning the thing itself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's a very good point that I think the work makes you realize in a way. But one another thing that came, comes to mind is is the idea of like borders as well, uh, especially you know experiencing insula and just going around our island <laughs> and like and do yeah. you think do you think that if we use that as a metaphor for like for the tech for this tech imaging technology do you think that they reinforce or create like borders? 
I mean, it is interesting because, of course, Into Your Life, when I first made it, it was it was a Brexit piece. So it was happening, you know, in the sort of final grim days of the, of the Brexit vote. Um, and so the initial, the reason I made it in the first place was this kind of tracing of our sea borders, both in, in kind of thinking as a kind of patrolling of the idea of the border and a kind of, you know, enclosing and an isolating. Um, so that was the kind of the sort of initial logic to it. And in fact, it was also um, there's an area. I mean, if you spend a lot of time in Google Earth, you see there's a sort of there's a space where the attention drops off. So you've got like this sort of detailed footage and then suddenly it goes into this sort of generic C. So I was quite interested in that kind of that place where, you know, you've got your attention on the land and then it sort of wears out and then you're in this kind of unattended space. So I was quite interested in that. Um, but what if you one of the things that really interests me within Google Earth around that kind of idea of borders is this idea of um, data borders. So I mean, yes. Google Earth um, obviously is made out of um, individual satellite shots, which have then been stretched over a, an increasingly sophisticated 3D mesh of the world. So you then have um, something which I think, you know, I always love when it happens in in C line it, it happens quite like you have this idea of these data borders, these dividers where you're moving through what is effectively one moment in time because it's, you know, it's a single image of a single split second in time, mm -hmm. which has kind of been given another sort of a weird, another sort of afterlife. Yes. And you're moving through one moment in time. And then suddenly there's this really kind of clear visual border where you move into another moment in time, um, which might be like, you know, three years earlier or three years later. Or so you've got this. Yeah. So they, they, this this idea of this data manufactured data world and the where it kind of breaks and changes yeah. just becomes really explicit. And it's not just around time, though time is a fascinating element of it. It's also around uh, quality. And, you know, quality is one of those things that becomes really, um, if you're talking again about sort of borders and reinforcing borders, the idea of kind of quality and attention, again, is another yeah. way that that, that happens, um, isn't it? You know, so you've got, you know, even just within the UK, you know, you've got, you can see that, you know, if you're in the big city, you've got this very sort of, rich three-dimensional constantly changing view of the world you know you go out into say the Welsh countryside you know um, and suddenly it's kind of it's flat it's old yeah. um, and you see that kind of that sort of dropping off in kind of attention and quality as you move outside the big sort of western urban centers so there's yeah, all of that absolutely. kind of yeah there's this sort of notion of that it, it's like a sort of it's a very hierarchical yes world, isn't it With, exactly you know, yeah sort of high quality areas and low quality areas and I imagine also probably quite a significant hierarchy in terms of who as a government can afford to get Google to hide their their secret stuff. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And we can see that like mm. quite clearly by navigating around Google, right? So yeah, in a way how this happens. I think this is fascinating to think about. But also I'm really in I was really interested when you first when you started when you developed the first kind mm. of version of Insula in terms, as you were saying, like in the context of Brexit as well. And and that's how, you know, I was kind of thinking about the idea of borders as well, but mm. also in the context of uh, technologies and data and how, you know, these uh, kind of uh, like systems in a way create new bureaucracies and like digital bureaucracies and like who is left out, who is kind mm. of in of that which is really interesting in how you know it's kind of thinking about the work and how it makes you uh like link to this um other kind of uh 
uh, yeah, like t- thematics as well, which is oh. which is great. I, it's I think it's a it's a it's a fascinating project. So yeah, so thank you again thank you. for oh, sharing you. it okay. in the exhibition, and thank you for your time uh, here to sharing more about about the uh, your insights behind the work. Oh, thank you, Irene. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And um, yeah, thank you again for uh, putting NCLI into into the exhibition. Um, yeah, and great, great to catch up and thank you. Now, share ideas. <laughs>